Moore's law sounds like a comforting, or perhaps disturbing, promise that computer processing power will double about every two years. But despite the fact we call it a law, there have been plenty of folks in the tech center opining that Moore's law is in fact dead, and we're hitting some kind of wall when it comes to just how powerful we can make our technology. But how much truth is there to the rumor, and who the heck is Moore anyway? But turns out, Gordon Moore wasn't just some guy that made an observation about CPUs. He was one of the founders of Intel. His story begins back in 1957, a few years after he finished his PhD at Caltech. At the time, he was working for Nobel Prize winner William Shockley on semiconductor development. But Shockley wasn't exactly the best boss, with his management style characterized by paranoia, aggressiveness, and intrusiveness. The trinity of bad boss qualities. So maybe it's not surprising that he was later disgraced for espousing views that could only be described as, uh, alarmingly racist. Moore and seven of his colleagues left Shockley's company and started a new firm called Fairchild Semiconductor. This walkout became so famous that Moore's group became known in tech circles as the Traitorous Eight. Ravaging towns across Silicon Valley. <laughs> Fairchild went on to develop the first commercially viable integrated circuit, and although the company is no longer around, its employees went on to found other influential tech firms, including both AMD and Intel. It was also at Fairchild that Moore thought up the first formulation of his famous law in 1965, that the number of components in an integrated circuit would double yearly. Along with fellow traitorous eightster Robert Noyce. Moore left Fairchild in 1968 to found a new company they originally thought about naming More Noise. But since that sounded too much like More Noise, they decided that wasn't the best brand for an electronics firm. And I wish I could go back in time to tell them they're making a huge mistake. Instead, they went with NM Electronics, but quickly changed the name to Intel, less than a month after the company was founded. Sounded a little more noise. So now you know why Moore was important, but is his law still as important as the man himself? We'll tell you right after we thank Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Grammarly is throwing their hat into the AI ring with Grammarly Go, which offers generative AI to accelerate your productivity while staying true to your personal style. What makes Grammarly Go so unique is that you can customize your preferred communication style by setting your voice to personalize your tone. The business team uses Grammarly Go to rewrite emails and talking points to be more concise, all while keeping it authentic to our voice. Need help with a video concept? Just input a prompt and Grammarly Go will provide innovative ideas to unlock your creative potential. Our favorite part about Grammarly Go is that it's there to help you write. There's no need to leave the platform you're on. Just download, sign up, and start typing you'll be amazed at what you can do with Grammarly Go. So sign up at grammarly.com slash techwiki and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. While Moore's law prophesies exponential growth in transistor density, Moore himself later predicted that the rate of increase would eventually slow down. In 2005, Moore pointed out that we'd eventually hit some pretty hard physical limits, such as the size of an atom. And indeed, while we've seen experimental transistors that work by changing the position of only a single atom, there's still a debate raging as to whether this is the right way to look at Moore's law. One consideration is that there isn't a standardized way to determine how big transistors are. There already isn't much consistency between Intel and AMD, and with newer transistor types that involve three-dimensional designs and alternative materials, focusing on transistors per unit area might actually be missing the point. Instead, current discussions on Moore's law tend to be more about whether we're going to continue to see a certain amount of processing power gradually become cheaper. Jensen Wong, CEO of NVIDIA, famously said last year that he believes Moore's law to be truly dead, as silicon wafer costs had risen to the point where consumers could no longer count on getting significantly more performance at a lower price if they waited a year or two. Jensen was simply making an observation. There's nothing he can do about it. But of course, that doesn't mean the price of a wafer is the only variable to think about. We've already seen chiplet-based processors that save money over monolithic chips that get lower yields, new transistor designs like gate all around that can push through more electrons at once, and the rise of artificial intelligence, which aims to provide more performance through machine learning than we'd otherwise see just from doubling the number of transistors alone. So while we might not 
not be able to keep making our chips impossibly chock full of transistors, the tech industry still has plenty of tricks up its sleeve to make a future full of self-driving cars, hyper-realistic games, and disturbing deepfakes a reality. Somehow, I don't think computers will ever be powerful enough to make Twitter a more civil place. But you were powerful enough to make it to the end of this video. Hey, thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow TechWiki, where we will suggest things to you that maybe you hadn't thought of before.